The Futasi Masanaga was one of the worst criminals in Japanese history. Now, this isn't just hyperbole. This is what the criminal prosecutors have said. And because of this, a lot of media in Japan didn't report on all the details of the case. Now, this is a two-parter, which is what we've done with this because it was just so enthralling and we kind of ran over so rather than put you through two hours of this we have split it up into two individual episodes so strap in because obviously this is a horrible thing that went on and uh yeah Good luck. to the M.O. Podcast Dark. As always, you're here with me, Consumatia Sam. And me, Atreya. And this week, we are going to be talking about Futoshi Masunage. Now, this is one of the worst cases in Japanese criminal history. Now, they're not my words. They were the words from the prosecutor's mouth. Now, this case was so bad that the Japanese media were not willing to report all the details. The only reason that we know about this is because, again, like the the previous Japanese case, the Junko case, is because of freelance writers, magazine writers, gone above and beyond and exposed this person for what he was. So are you so, telling me this is worse than the Junko one? Yep. Nothing is worse than that one. Speak to me oh. in 40 minutes. Okay? What uh, percentage is this? Yeah. Just mouth, it's fine. Just get a straw. It'll be all right. Really? With that? I think I might. I'll just drink from the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> so that's basically your trigger warning out there. If you don't want to hear about this, then there's the, the we covered the 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 Junko case, and that was bad enough. Yet the prosecutors that was fucking horrific for that case didn't say it was the worst case in Japanese criminal history. Yet they're saying this is so. That's your trigger warning. There, there's a lot of stuff. Did this one happen before or after Junko? Now. This is quite interesting because it happened pretty much concurrently with that case. So maybe that's why they didn't say this is the worst case for the Junko one because they thought we've got another one coming up and we'll just level them out and see which is worse. But by the time this one came out, it was already the other one was already done. So they were like, well, if we could go back and retrospectively say that one is equally as horrific. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. but again, as well with the Junko case, a lot of blame can be laid at the feet of the Japanese authorities because they had plenty of time to stop this escalating. But for some reason, they didn't. And it wasn't anything to do with the Yakuza. It was just they failed in every single aspect of trying to stop this case. Uh do I need to does the dog die dot com this? No. Okay. No, no animals were harmed in the filming of this podcast. No arms no animals would ever be harmed in the filming of this podcast. I've just had to boot one out. I've, I guess that's technically harm. Wow, I've there you go. Him. I've I've just had Full to Full disclosure. I've I've literally had to force him to cuddle downstairs with Dave because he kept coming up to me wanting a cuddle. So that's as much harm as my animals get. They get mm. forced to cuddle somebody else. 
And these are the sacrifices that you're making to record this. First world problems. So, although Matsunaga is technically a serial killer, it's another case of he never actually killed someone like Parker Ray, the toy box killer. He, he never actually killed someone. It was just, well, it was never proved that he killed someone. But in this case, he got other people to do it. I mean, you would though, wouldn't you? Yeah. And there's, it's there's the a, safest way of murder. Yeah. So there's a lot of parallels to a lot of the Japanese cases. And that is not... Uh, uh, I'm not being like... Uh, flippant with that remark but there's a lot of, we've covered the uh like the the junko's killers and the um shiruka the the cult in japan and they were they they were all led by a charismatic leader let us say uh and this is one of the cases that is just like that uh, and the Hello Kitty one was exactly the same. I was looking into that the other day, and that was it, it almost mirrors the Junko one. And it's like, okay, so why are people not like, they'd be like, oh, this has already happened like three, four, five, maybe 12 times. And they're still not like, hmm, we should look into this one because this has happened before and we've been bitten before. Yeah, yeah. It's the same and fucking thing. Why are the police not doing anything about it? It, seem, it seems to be, from what I've looked... Now, obviously, this is broad strokes, and I, I don't want to be, like, flippant or anything like that, but from a lot of the Japanese cases that I've looked at, it is kind of... There is cultish behaviour going on, like brainwashing, using power and control over supplicants and them doing this, and this is one of them cases straight out of the gate. Uh... So, Matsunaga was born in 1961 in Fukuoka Prefecture. And from a young age, he showed extremely high intelligence, but he was reported to have a disciplinary problem. He had an aversion to authority and he wouldn't work in a team. He wanted everything for himself. I think in one instance... He managed to, at school, he managed to uh, perform a coup in one of their clubs and get rid of the president because he wanted that power and that control over. But that's how that's his mind... standard serial killer material. Exactly, and that's how his mind was working at this young of an age. Uh, so as soon as he hit puberty, he started to use this to his advantage and he succeeded by seducing women and well women he was in school girls into bed when it was discovered was you that, fit? Uh, i mean not for me i mean why is it always the ugly ones yeah. like serial killers are supposed to be good looking he must have had either a great personality or have been hung because from the pictures that i've seen it's not well, I did hear, right, that you don't have to be good looking to pull girls if you've got a good sense of humour, because if a girl's laughing, she's got her eyes closed, so it doesn't matter what you look like, which is fair. Humour is everything. Very I true. I mean, let's look at David Parker Ray. He didn't have much going for him. He wasn't a basket of fruit, was he? No. So when it was discovered that... Um, Masanaga had a sexual relationship with a female student at his high school. He was transferred to an all boys school. Oof. But that was hell on earth. Yeah, which he deserved. But. I went to an all girls school originally before I transferred. It was the other way around for me. It was fucking horrible. I mean, I'd like that, but. Well, of course you would. You're a big girl. Uh. Well. So, a lot of sources claim that Matsunaga was, he had a great personality and he seduced these women. But, in essence, he was a rapist and he forced himself on these women and he would then blackmail them, either by using threats to come 
to tell their family that they'd lost their virginity or he'd use violence to keep them supplicant. Now, this Could is they just... not have said, I'll tell my dad that you raped me? But this is, this is the thing as well. I think it was more of the era in Japanese society mm. of where... Maybe it was all the, the era. This this is this is the seventies and eighties. So maybe it was all of the era that, that that these women needed to be pure until they got married and then lost their virginity after they got married, kind of thing. So <coughs> it, shame they didn't move over to England or America where it was all free love. Yeah, let's get high and make out. Yeah, I mean, and as well as we discussed in the Junko Futura case, women weren't held in high regard either within that society so even if they would have said anything would they have been listened to no it's a struggle we've had for millennia exactly exactly except in the ancient times in like ancient greece ancient rome ancient egypt women were badass we ran the fucking show the vikings exactly we were at the front with our fucking shields and then you know they strapped us into corsets and had them big things that made us look like we had a Beyonce ass, mm. and then that that was it. We were repressed. Yeah. Nobody whapped their shield out God and went damn. fucking bring it on. Goddamn patriarch. <sighs> I know. Wait, what? Uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> so he was also purported to use the same mind control techniques that Shoko Asara, who was the leader of the the cult leader of um Shikinro, who used to brainwash his followers into believing everything he said and they'd go on to bomb the Tokyo subway. But at the age of nineteen, Matsunaga married and had a child. But by the time he was twenty one, he had at least ten mistresses. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Ten mistresses? Yeah. They were called mistresses? Yeah. Is it so, not just he slept around a bit and had ten different girlfriends? He, he had ten different women on the go at this particular point, apparently. Again... I'd be mortified if someone called me their mistress. Yeah. Again, because a lot of this was, wasn't was reported by the mainstream Japanese media, or any media for that matter, because it barely got out of Japan... We have to rely on, I'm not going to say single sources, but we have to rely on what the reporters did who didn't work for the mainstream Japanese media kind of thing. So, and to be honest with you, a lot of this, because none of these people came forward, a lot of this is from his own mouth when he was confessing to what he had done. So a lot of the stuff you kind of maybe not take with a pinch of salt, but you have to, like, especially when he's talking about himself, is go, hmm, maybe. I don't know. It can go one of two ways, can't it? So, like, serial killers, whether they kill directly or indirectly, they're so full of themselves, they, they love the bragging rights of the shit that they've done. So it could be either completely all true, because he wants everybody to know what a sadistic prick he is. Or it could be the complete other way because they're all pathological liars. And it could be that he really didn't do anything. And he stood behind this big guy that was built like Tom Hardy going, yeah, get him, get him. Exactly, exactly. So there was... Maybe uh, he was truthful. Yeah. So, yeah, you have to take a lot of what he's saying, especially the kind of person that he is and his braggadocio of like, yeah, I had all these people on the go. It's like, maybe with a pinch of salt kind of thing. Uh, but at this time, he had managed to convince Junko Agata. Now, another Junko, so let's not get confused. Uh, so Junko Agata was his former schoolmate before he got put into an all-boys school, and he managed to just ring her up one day and convince her that he was going to run away from his wife and his children and run off and marry her. Now... Were they... Was she, like, into that? She what, was... She was just like, no, we just, like, have sex on a Saturday, but I'm good with the whole... Mm -hmm. She I'm fell sure. under his spell and she wanted to be with him. Now, Junko's mother... 
Shizumi was against this marriage and she was very vocal and upfront with uh, Matsunaga about the issues that she had with him. She knew he was a philanderer, she knew he, he, he was no good for her and she basically, when he came round, she said to him, this is not going to happen over my dead body. So rather... And he was like, you said I was a philanderer, I'm a philanthropist. Different, totally different. Keep the pissed bit there, and you'll find out what he did to Shunko's mother. Oh, Lord. He forced himself on her, and then threatened to expose her infidelity. Uh, wow. Yeah. So this is, this is like the balls on the guy. He raped his own future mother-in-law, and then turned round to her and said, I'm going to expose you to the community for this because you have made me do this firstly where was her husband in all of this could she not have gone my husband's bigger than you and he's gonna fuck you up or would her daughter not have just gone you just raped my mom like i've gone off you so junko never knew about this at the time and this is the reason why he kind of kept it secret because it was the blackmail aspect of it so and bear in mind this is when he is he's 20 odd and her parents are 40 50 so and again it's the whole uh, is is what's the father gonna say like is is he gonna be respectful and say i believe you or is he gonna go the other way because of well, what I mean, society deems at the time. Well, I don't know. I would hope that he would still believe his wife. Like, if she was, like, totally traumatised and came to him and said, oh, my God, this weirdo who's trying to marry, marry our daughter just fucking rapes me. Like, sort him out. Like, surely you could tell if somebody was so traumatised and so fucking horrified and in such a bad way that you would be like, yeah, no, she's telling the truth. If she kind of came in and went, I've got this glow. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh um, he, uh, he, 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 he raped me. Like, yeah. no, you could, if somebody's been raped, they look fucking horrified and traumatised. Indeed. But They've been I raped, mean, it's a horrible fucking thing. It is, but it's still prevalent in today's society. How many of, of rape victims come forward nowadays? I know, but they don't walk, they don't swan away happy as Larry, do they? They just keep all the trauma inside and they end up with all these fucking issues and trauma and stuff that they never get over. Exactly. Or, you know, mostly I... don't get over. They don't, They but they don't carry on with their lives like nothing happened. They kind of, they just totally different people. I don't, I don't genuinely think Suzumi did. I, ju- I just think it was, she was cowed into <clears throat> this situation. Oh, people need to just stand up. And then, if he hadn't have believed her, then, like, if I was raped, God forbid, I hope I never get raped, if I was raped, and I kind of went to Dave and said, Dave, I was raped, if he turned around and said, you're a lying bitch, you were asking for it, I would be like, right, okay, I don't think it's meant to be between us, so how about you fuck off, and I'll go and find somebody who believes me. Indeed. But then- I know it's the 70s. But then we had that that the woman from uh, uh, David the uh, David Parker Ray incident, where uh, none of her family believed that she could not remember that she had been subjected to this torture, and they basically turned her back on her, and a piece of shit husband divorced her. Yeah, but then that's what I mean. If he's if her husband's like that, you just kind of go right, well, it sounds like your loss because it sounds like a you problem that you don't believe that this actually happened to me. And then you move on and you find somebody who believes you. But then that takes mental fortitude on your part. And you've you've gone through this horrible thing that has happened to you. I mean, I cannot speak either way or, but you've gone through this horrible thing that has mentally broken you. Yeah, totally. You're supposed to, like, if you went to the person that you loved and cared for most and they turned around and went, no, how much of a psychological blow would that be as well? It'd send a you massive into the one. So, of but course you, it would. So then you would want to find somebody who would be there to support you. You would. Because you'd be like, this person is a piece of trash. I've just been fucking, had this horrible thing happen to me and they don't believe me. 
Yeah, no, one hundred percent. I get it, but it's easier said than done. It's like we're we're speaking from privileged positions that this has never True. happened to us. And hope touch wood, dear God, whatever. I hope it never happens to anyone out there. But obviously, this shit does happen, and this is why you we, people need to break the stigma of sexual abuse, of rape, of sexual assault, this kind of thing. And it is fine to report it. No one's going to think yeah. any worse of you. It's a social Don't stigma. Don't stay that quiet. We still, exactly. And yes. it's a social Don't stigma stay quiet. that we still have to this day. And this happened 20, 30 years ago. Well, 40 years ago, isn't it? Cause it's Always age, remember, but... the person that doesn't believe you is the piece of shit, not you. And they're equally, I mean, yeah, okay, they're equally just as bad as the person who did it to you because they don't believe you and you're the person who's supposed to be the, the person that they trust most in the whole world. So fuck them off, be a better person and find somebody that will believe you and treat you like you should be treated because the person who doesn't believe you is a sack of shit and doesn't deserve your time. 100%, 100%. And Speak out. Yeah, yeah, and just make your voice heard. Uh Obviously, again, we're speaking from a place of privilege. This has never happened to either of us. No. Uh, well. No. It... But do you not find that? <coughs> I mean, a rapist, in a very, in a very simplistic term, is still just a bully. Yes, and, without a shadow of a doubt. And the best way to stop a bully is to punch them in the face back. If they punch you, you punch them back. And then they stop coming at you because they realise that they need to move on to somebody that won't fight back. So if anything like that ever happens to you, fight back or they'll keep coming at you or they'll do it to somebody else. So report them or stab them in the neck with an ice pick. Yeah. Or key their car. Yeah. And just let's be clear, if you are, I think the dynamic of female and male in fighting back, I think the way a female can fight back against the male is to report them. I wouldn't advise anyone to go for physical violence just because this may escalate it and because it's about power and control on the male's part, it may get to a situation where it goes into one of these stories and that we're talking about you. The way to fight back for a female... I'm not saying don't kick him in the knackers or don't punch him in the face. I'm just saying be as safe as you can be and the way to fight back against these people is to report them go to your friends and family and make sure he this person is exposed to the great although to to be fair in western civilization now most of us can drop a bloke like a sack of shit so oh without a shadow of a doubt without a shadow of a doubt give that a go as well all i'm saying is don't put yourself in danger if this ever happens Kick in the bollocks and then go for the throat. Always yeah. the way. But don't put yourself in Neck, danger. Balls, what... head, butt, run. Yeah. I just don't want to put. I know not many people listen to this or watch this, but it's still a few. So don't put yourself in danger is, is the ultimate thing that I'm trying to say. Yeah, those 12 people that listen to this episode will take away this knowledge. Five of them are us on different accounts and uh, the, other, the other seven. So Nova, Prophet, uh, Jack, Jeff, you guys will be absolutely like spot on. If a bloke comes at you, you can just punch him in the throat, knee him in the balls and hit him in the face. Yeah. <laughs> I work hard on this research anyway. Whatever. Uh... <laughs> You asked me to do this with you, dude. I know, yeah, Jesus. And, and, and I, Look, I, I, I was the one telling you to get drunk as well. Fuck it out. If I don't, if I don't lighten it up, okay, <coughs> we'll we'll both cry, okay? Or you'll start to cry, and then because you're crying, I'll cry because it's one of those things, and then we'll all be crying, and then that'll make for a really awkward episode where mm. we're all ugly crying. Yeah, it's very true. Uh, so in 1982, Masunaga had bought a building that he would claim to operate a futon business out of, but it was basically just a money laundering front because he had laundered a lot of money out of his victims. So each of the mistresses, the 10 mistresses that he had, were all giving him money at some point. We've all been there. Yeah. So while at the futon factory, Masanaga would creak, creep up behind employees and he would shock them in one of two ways. 
Firstly, he would either creep up behind someone very quietly and shout, There is a spirit behind you. It is sucking away your fortune. Or secondly, he would literally shock them with a shock stick. Uh, And this would emit a powerful electrocution to them. I mean, if you're going to shock somebody, boo always works. Um, Or a shock stick. That also, I've heard, is, is the bee's knees. One of them fly swatter things as well apparently also works. Gives you a little zap enough to kind of go, oh. Yeah, but not yeah, enough to, yeah, yeah. you know, really hurt. But shouting, there's a spirit behind you and it's sucking your life force. That's given them too long. It's too long to react. That's not, it's not a scary thing. Yeah. I can try that literally downstairs in five minutes and it will have no effect. So, no effect at all. Yeah, I think, I think this is why he moved on to the shock stick because he wasn't getting much effect from that and he wanted an, an, a reaction from people. He could have moved on to boo or even rah. Yeah. Those also work. Like, that's the steps before the cattle prod. Yeah, he he, he goes one to a hundred really quickly. Uh, you reckon? Guy. So, Junko was still living at home in 1985, but when she tried to commit suicide because of the way Masanaga was treating her, Masanaga actually used this as ammunition to separate her from her family. So, he basically shamed her in front of the family saying this this is your daughter she she's not really worth enough she doesn't want to live i'll take care of her and she moved in with him uh later in the year now she'd prefer to suffer that violent abuse that she went through with him than the side eyes from her family which again societal stuff maybe it's just japan but the it's pressure's a dick quite bad yeah by 1992 masanaga had stolen 180 million yen and this is equivalent to 2.2 million dollars from all of the people that he had either slept how with how rich were food. they this is how he lived this is how he lived uh now, should have written a book. Due to this, both he and Junko were placed on Japanese the Japanese police most wanted list. But they weren't captured for another ten years. So how wanted that list is? I, I was gonna say they weren't no that idea. wanted, were they? Yeah. <clears throat> that now, list got lost in the post. Yeah. In April of 1993, Matsunaga had identified his first murder victim. Now, she was a married woman and she had three children. After convincing her that Junko was just his daughter, they were roughly the same age, uh, the woman ran away with him and she took her children. Now, by September... As if you would! Yeah. I know, I, I, I genuinely, he must have been charismatic as anything. I just, I genuinely don't know how this I feel shit like works. he raided all the dad jokes book. He, he must have been like wooing him with a lute or something and throwing roses at <laughs> Outside because, the window. Yeah, like some <laughs> Romeo shit because this is like unprecedented. But by September of 1993... One of the woman's children was dead, and they died under mysterious circumstances. The following month, of course, they fucking did. Yeah, the following month, thankfully, the other two children went to live with their father and grandfather. Yet by March 1994, the woman had died. But this was not before masanaga had managed to steal 11.8 million yen which is $145,000 from her did her husband not kind of go oi one of my kids is dead under your watch how about we take it out into the car park fucking now again this is what i don't understand with all of this and even that we we spoke about with uh the the previous japanese case with the uh the yakuza if the, even if you were a pasty white, a pasty little flake kind of thing, you go to them and go, "That have all my money, 
but find out what the fuck's going on with this guy because my yeah. my my wife and my ch- kid's dead and he's killed him. So there's all my yeah. money. Take everything. I don't care. It's uh, one so- thing like your wife leaving you and running off with somebody, but like for a bloke, surely when one of your kids dies, that's it. Like that surely should be the turning point for you where you just go right. No, this is not happening. Exactly. I'm getting involved now. There's a line in the sand. Uh, yes. Amazingly, Matsunaga was the prime suspect in both of these killings, but apparently the police couldn't find any evidence. Don't know how. Just Did they not do an autopsy on the child? It was just swept under the carpet, so I have no idea. And again, with the with the very limited reporting on this it's it's kind of hard i didn't find any autopsy results or anything so maybe he had an in with the district police or something mm. and maybe that was the case because he didn't move outside of the area after this happened and he wasn't yakuza <coughs> no no there is no there is no indication that he he was in the yakuza which, if he was, then you could go, oh, yeah, fine, fair enough, I kind of get it. But it, it's just, apparently, this is all on... Everything that I've seen is all about his charisma, his charm. So... <coughs> I mean, it worked for Ted Bundy, I guess. Yeah, yeah, so maybe he's the Japanese Ted Bundy, who, like, he, the, this is this is kind of the level that you've got to put him at. But Ted Bundy was good-looking. Yeah. Like... That, that helps with charisma. Yeah. And he has some good ploys. Mm. Like, oh, nobody can turn down a bloke in a cast that can't lift his canoe onto his car. And nobody thought, why is this man canoeing when he's broken his arm? Oh, my God. I'm going to report it on you soon, aren't I? Fuck me. <laughs> I just, I just have done, I've watched too many documentaries and know too much research to if a bloke with a broken arm in a cast came up to me with his cute little yellow car and said, Hey, can you help me lift this heavy thing into my car? I have a broken arm. I'd be like, "What you? What were you doing with that in the first place? And how did you get it off? What were you hoping to do?" And right, no, no, you're a serial killer. Yeah, you can't get cast wet, so you're not doing a barrel roll, are you? Come on, <laughs> come on, son. I'd be like, "I'm out of here. You better ask somebody else." And then I'll be leaving some poor person in a cast yeah. to struggle with their canoe. Go and find John and Darwin. Save my own life. Go and yes. find John Darwin. <laughs> exactly. He'll build you a kayak. You don't even need to bother with <laughs> exactly. that one. Exactly. I already know I will make a great lamp, but you're <laughs> the person that makes me it. Hmm. That's by the by. So, with the police not tying him to, or having any evidence against him, this may have inflated his already massive ego. And later that year... Masinaga went on to identify his next pair of victims. Now, these were Kumo Toria and his daughter. Now, because she was underage, and even when they got caught, she was still underage, her name has never been released. So we'll call her L for simplicity's sake. It doesn't sound like a very Japanese name, man. Okay, well, I was going to go through my death notes. Uh, Can but, we call a Junko? Yeah, no, because there's another Junko in it, so it just get confused. Oh, okay. So, L from Death Note. So, these, <laughs> this pair lived in the same apartment block as Matsunaga and Junko, and they would befriended this family. And after conversations, which one can only assume was over Saki... Kumio admitted to them that he had a nefarious past. He had a couple of run-ins with the law and he wasn't on the right side of the police. Now, as always... Sorry, when you say... When you say over-saki, do you mean like he was overly sarcastic or it was saki like the drink saki the drink this this was one oh, of okay. this was one of matsunaga's ploys what he would do he was he would get people uh drunk and he would get them to tell them their secrets so okay. he would build a friendship like, with them i feel like over saki would only work if you were in britain yeah yeah it would work with me yeah 
See if, uh, yeah. uh, it would. I love sarcasm. It's anger's best cousin, or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, so this information that they got out of Camille is the stuff that they used to blackmail him. Now... Kumio and Elle were confined to their apartment and various tortures were committed on the both of them just for Matsunaga and Junko's pleasure. Now, these included forcing them to eat their own feces, performing electric shocks on the pair, locking them in the bathroom during the cold Japanese winter, and then spraying water on them while they stayed there overnight. Uh, there were some things that I've also heard, and but they didn't come across in all the points of research, so I'm not gonna go into it. But don't they, dangle the you've dangled the carrot now. So basically, they were a man and a female child locked in a room and they were tortured and they may have been forced to do things oh god see that's why i didn't want to do it uh but there you go uh okay right just i have this issue okay it's like the the only times <coughs> and this could just be because i haven't researched every case in the world i don't know but what is it with these Japanese cases where they are insistent on making people eat shit? You don't hear about that anywhere else. It just seems to be the Japanese cases. I mean, I've like, I've researched like hundreds of cases across the world, you know, Austria and Hungary and America and France and Britain and Germany. And just literally forcing people to eat their own shit seems to be singularly Japanese. Yeah, I've, I've, yeah. I'm the same. I've never actually come across it before. But in this instance, they had a particular amount of time in the day to do their toilet time. If they did it outside of that time, they would basically, like, an animal, if you're training an animal, they would have their noses rubbed in it and they would be forced to eat what they had done. I mean... Yeah. Like for me, yeah. and it's probably I don't I just I just don't know. For me, that is there's so many horrible, horrible things you can do to a human being, but for me personally, that is the single most degrading thing you can do to a human being. Is yeah. make them eat shit. I mean I'd prefer to eat my own shit than eat somebody else's, but eating shit is still that is for me the most degrading thing you can do to a human being. Yeah, yeah. I, w- I would I would have to agree. Uh, now, what you've got to realise is is Kumio was being led along by if you do this, we will keep you and your daughter alive. So it was A, self-preservation and preservation for his daughter. So he, he'd do anything at this, at this point in time, I suppose, for them. Uh, now... Cool. That's the thing, isn't it? Like, say if you're kidnapped by this whack job, and they always are whack jobs, let's face it. You're kidnapped by this whack job, and he says to you, you know, he breaks your fingers and pulls your fingernails out and yanks your teeth out and makes you eat shit and all this kind of stuff. And then he says, if you don't do this, we'll kill you. You just kind of go, fucking do it. Just get it over with. But as soon as they say, and we'll kill your family and all three of your cats. Strangely, it's suddenly like there you go. Yeah, that's the kicker. Yeah, yeah. What do you want? Okay, gotta, anything gotta do you it. want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's as soon as they know what what you love best. Yeah. As soon as they, they know you've got you've got some weakness that is involved. It. It's another person, or it's an animal, or a child, or something. That's it. You are fucked. Yeah. But if you if it's just you, you can just be like, just fucking do it. Yeah. I just I'm I'm done now. Get it over with. Yeah. And it, and okay. this is this is the thing as well. I mean, even uh, the ancient Greeks knew it. That's why hope mm-hmm. was the only thing left in Pandora's box when all the horrors of the world was released. It was just hope that was left in. And this is the human condition. We always have the hope that 
if you follow these rules, then these people are going to live. And and this is how a manipulator works by because they know it's a human condition that you have. Uh, so when Junko and Matsunaga got bored of their torture to Kumio, they would force L to abuse him. And they would dangle Kara saying she, she'd she get extra food or she'd get more hours sleep or she wouldn't get shocked that day if she would only shock her father. And because she was young or because of the psychological torture that she had gone through, she went ahead and did this. And by all accounts, Kumio was actually saying save yourself in this kind of respect that like you need to do whatever you can to save yourself so do whatever you want to me uh, but due to this abuse Kumio died and the pair Junko and Matsunaga blamed it on L. they actually made a sign a piece of paper that said she had electrocuted him to death she she had done this. She put it through torture, and this is this is less than a teenager that they are forcing to do this. This is some Hunger Games shit. What would have happened if they'd have both turned around and went, "No, I'm not doing it." They well, they would have died. They, I mean, but the, 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 can you imagine torturing your 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 parent or like? A person you loved to death. Like, I would rather die. No, but then the the, the the thing was, was that Kumio was saying, do not feel bad about this. This is what you have to do to survive. I want you to survive. This is what... Is, I, this, this has to happen if you want to survive. I would always assume... I was always, always err on the side of caution. Always think of the worst case scenario is that they are never going to let you go. They're never going to let you live because you've seen their faces. You know who they are. Just assume you're going to die and then you will go down fighting. But what you've got to remember is that this was... I, I, I'm not even going to guess the age, but this was a single-digit age child. Yeah, who were very attached to their parents at that age. Kumio died age 34. So she couldn't have been that much older. So whether she probably knew right and wrong, I'm not saying that's that that that's what we're discussing. But I'm saying if if you're at that age and your dad says this is what you have to do to survive, this is what, I do not hold any grudges against you doing this. Do it, please, for you to get more food, more sleep, whatever. They're going through this living hell. Yeah, my dad would say that to me, but I wouldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I I, I would never ever put myself. But you're not. But you're not a, an eight nine year old child in this situation. I, so you can't I say know, you but... wouldn't do it. We all do whatever we can to survive. It's like Pandora's box again. Hope is there. You know, it's it's one mm. of them. I don't know. Okay, and as well, don't be saying that because this could make a lot of freaky people out there on the internet go, well, let's see what she can do. Uh, bring it on, bro. You know? Fucking bring it on. We'll put this on the dark web. Uh, I mean, I mean I'm, not, I'm not being funny, but I'm not... I know I'm a, I'm, I can be a fucking douchebag. I know that, and I know I'm an arsehole, but I never, ever put somebody else before myself. I just don't do it. I'm always the like the last the last thing to think about on my list of things to do or like things that are priorities. Until you're in a life and death situation, you really can't comment on it. It's not. No, it's not, I know, it's, but it's, I feel like even if I was, somebody else would always be more important than me. I'm sure. I'm sure that is that is a beautiful sentiment, but I'm sure if you're put into that situation, you'd be fucking heading for the door straight. Every man for himself. Fuck off. Elbowing. No, no. Okay, you know, you know what it is. Right? I was, I was going to say, me and you play the zap game, you know, when you have to, like, electrocute mm. your mates 
like and it, it gets in intensity right i would zap you like to the till your fucking balls turn blue see there you go God, so so like, yeah yeah but <laughs> but i don't like, like you came, so but if it came to like my cat someone that i cared for i would be like Zap me all you oh, want. Oh, <laughs> now it all comes out. Fuck I only now. zap the douchebags. Great. So it's only till your balls burn, turn blue. It's not till you die. I wouldn't go that far. Cheers for that. Uh, like your balls are already blue on a daily basis. Well, yeah. Uh, so, Kumio died at the age of 34 due to his injuries. And... They blamed Elle for this and they forced her to dismember his body and dispose of it in rivers and the surrounding area. Now, what's interesting to note at this point is through all of this, Elle still attended school. The authorities were never alerted they never noticed anything wrong with her, even though she would have marks on her, she would have clear lacerations on her, and she would have very uh, a, a lack of concentration. Not because of the torture and the psychological shit that's going on with her, it's because she only they only let them sleep for four hours a night. Yet no fucking teacher looked at her, no one in authority looked at her, a single digit age child and no one steps up why didn't she say something to her teachers again I have no idea but I think she has nothing to lose at this point this, no, this was before Kumio died oh, right, okay. so this was before I think it's kind of again the hope of being let go. But she could have told the teachers and then the teachers could have sent the police around. Yeah, but if the teachers aren't noticing a fucking girl falling asleep at a desk because she's only had four hours sleep at home and she's got fucking burn marks all over her body, I, I fucking don't know what they're doing. She might have had a blazer on or something. Like, kids fall asleep at their desks all the time, but she might have had, like... I'm not, like, making excuse and playing devil's advocate. Like, no, of course, She might of have had a blazer on, she might have had a shirt on, like, she might have hidden the burns, but, like, surely she could have gone to a teacher and said, hey, like, shit's going down, can you send the cops? It could have been, but, I mean, this, this confinement went f- over 18 months. So, I know, but how many kids, like, you literally say to them, I'm confiscating your fucking Xbox, and they ring Childline? Yes, but that's a Western thing, so... <laughs> I'm fairly sure that happens in Japan as well, dude. Uh, <coughs> so, after Kumio's death on the 26th of February 1996, Mansonaga went on to zero into his next victim, and this was an acquaintance of Kumio. Now, during the wooing of his next victim, Masanaga again pulled out all the stops. He convinced her that he would run away and marry her. Junko was only his daughter. He actually turned up the uh, IQ skills and said he was a graduate of uh, Kyoto University. And Did he say him what? No, he never actually did. They're probably fucking charm school fuck knows that would have been my first question yeah what would you do oh this and that uh all of it, isn't it? Uh, a degree in sociology yeah right okay so not the- my type theology uh yeah critical thinking <laughs> yeah right okay media uh, 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 i'm i'm away mate <laughs> comms uh-huh see ya <laughs> So when the the victim and her daughter actually came round for the first time to visit him at his apartment, they would not see the outside of the flat until another year. The only Did way they not see it on the way in. No, but the only way they escaped after a year of confinement was doing a head first jump out of a second story window. Which presumably would only probably break your ankle. Yes. 
And amazingly... Worth it? Yeah, amazingly. Well, you say worth it, but amazingly, they went to the police station, and what do you think they got for their troubles? Fuck all. The woman got sectioned. I mean, it's better than being held hostage. Yeah. You just held hostage in a different way. It's yeah. But it's safer, right? Yeah. She was placed into a... Uh, medical care facility and they claim that she had mental illnesses now the police never followed up on anything she ever said because apparently Masanaga never moved he lived in the same place for another few years even though he had a glaring hole in his fucking window where this woman had just binned herself out of it. Maybe he boarded it up. Maybe she got it reglazed. It's not impractical. Yeah. To get your window reglazed. So again, would you, if if there was a big hole in your window, would you leave it? I'll no. Glaze it. Well, of course, okay. but like. Then where's the evidence? Fuck you. Yeah, okay. I'm just thinking in, out of the box, Anne. Okay. Trier, Jesus. I'm just thinking it's not that hard to get a fucking window reglazed, okay? Somebody jumps through your window and you're like, it's a bit breezy in here. You get it reglazed. He's not a fucking idiot. No, he's not. He's not. Um, I don't think he's that clever, but he's... Well, no, it's he not like she either. leapt through the wall and left a person-shaped imprint through the brick. That like the whole... <laughs> Yes, that'd be more difficult to like rectify, but at, like a, a window, like you could be like somebody tossed a brick through my window, or a t- I, I the the TV lost its reception and I lobbed the fucker out the window. Please reglaze it for me. Sure, no problem. Yeah, very Check true. Easy, easy to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Please don't generally tend to look into like reglazes. No, but if from, they wouldn't, from what. From what I deal with reglazes on a daily basis. Please don't really look into it. <laughs> yeah. They're <laughs> just like, well, great. Get it sorted. So we're going to end it there and give you the part two because we ran over here. So apologies for the abrupt ending and also apologies for my terrible pronunciation all the way through this. And we shall see you next time for the second part. And it is something you, well, if you've come this far, then you're invested. So uh, good luck and we shall see you all next time. Bye.